this heart failure and how can it be potentially reversed using medications? Hi, I'm Dr. Maria Conley and today I'm going to talk about how heart failure happens and how it's possible to remodel your heart so that it's close to its normal state again by using specific medications that block your sympathetic nervous system and a group of proteins that control your blood pressure called the ROS, short for renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Your heart is essentially a set of two muscular pumps. The right side of the heart gets oxygen from the lungs and the left side of the heart gives oxygen to the rest of the body. Your heart uses blood as the transport medium for oxygen. When your heart pump fails, the rest of your body is unable to get the oxygen that it needs. Your heart is made up of four chambers and it's wrapped in several layers of muscle. Perhaps the most important chamber in your heart is the left ventricle, which is responsible for taking the blood with oxygen from the lungs and then pumping it to the rest of your body. First, let's look at two simple equations that can explain how your body regulates pressure and flow as it pumps blood and oxygen throughout your body. The most important equation for understanding heart failure is this. Cardiac output equals stroke volume multiplied by heart rate. A related equation to understand hypertension, which is essentially when the force of blood in your arteries after leaving the heart is too high, would in that equation is blood pressure equals cardiac output multiplied by systemic vascular resistance. Hypertension and heart failure often go together, so it's pretty helpful to know both of these equations. So what do these terms mean that we're talking about? So cardiac output is the amount of blood that your heart pumps through your blood vessels in a minute. So usually four to five liters per minute for most people. Stroke volume is the amount of blood that's pumped out of the left ventricle during one heart contraction. And systemic vascular resistance is the amount of force that your heart must overcome to pump blood throughout your body. In other words, it's the resistance to forward blood flow in your arteries. It's harder for blood to flow through arteries that are smaller in diameter. Heart failure often starts when your heart muscle is damaged from an acute or chronic injury. For example, if your heart is deprived of oxygen during a heart attack, some of your cardiac myocytes or muscle cells that power your cardiac pump will die off. This makes it more difficult to generate enough contractile force to transport an adequate amount of oxygen to the rest of your body. When your heart muscle pump is no longer able to generate enough stroke volume, your body senses this and then tries to compensate by different ways. The ROS proteins can increase the total amount of blood in your arteries, or they could squeeze your arteries harder to redirect blood to essential organs such as your brain. Your sympathetic nervous system can increase your heart rate and make your heart contract more forcefully. And you can grow more muscle in the wall of your left ventricle to make it pump blood more efficiently. Thus, you are able to usually increase your total cardiac output in the short term. Unfortunately, these mechanisms fail over time as your heart becomes overwhelmed by the increasing volume and pressure of blood that is coming into it from the rest of the body. So that's when you start seeing some of the classic signs and symptoms of heart failure, such as 
leg swelling, and excess fluid around the lung sacs, which can make it hard to breathe. In the next talk, we'll look at these compensatory mechanisms in greater detail. So we'll look at the four classes of medications that can potentially save your heart from failure. Thank you for listening. I hope that this is helpful for you.